Hot news, 10. Hot news. Unfortunately, we had to fire Reese today because he didn't get the jingle done like we agreed upon. And here's a little sneak peek as to how it went down. Reese, do you have the jingle done? No. What do you mean, no? Get out of here. Your Reese's Pieces. Be gone. Get out. Boy, go. How dare you? So, hot news, but no jingle for now until Tank can get it done, right Tank? Yep. Okay, so housekeeping out of the way, time to toe wrangle right into the first topic. Have you ever found yourself really wishing that your phone had more cameras? What's that? You already have the Huawei P20 Pro with three rear cameras? That's sad, because it seems like LG will be dropping the mic with the LG V40 by giving it a total of 40, I mean five, cameras. I mean, there's not much more to say about it than that. It appears that you'll get two on the front, three on the back, and it'll also have face ID while also having a notch display. It's LG. They hop on the gimmick train with their flagships more than most companies I've seen. So a bajillion cameras seems right up their alley. And then up the alley of Vivo, the company that just released their bezel-less phone, they've got big plans for face detection for Android phones. They announced today that they have a 3D depth sensing system with 300,000 sensor points for making sure they can map every single one of your pores. This is especially impressive when you consider that Apple's Face ID tech only has 30,000 sensor points. That's not even enough for the pores of my nose, Apple. Vivo is claiming that their tech can enable 3D mapping of objects from up to three meters away and detects how long light takes to get back to the sensors once it's emitted from the same sensors. There's no timeline on what it will be in a phone, but Vivo says that it's no mere proof of concept and they likely will be able to take on the discarded fruit giant in the near future. Then, speaking of detection, it's time for today's segment of Creepy Companies. So we're a couple days late on this news, but forgive us, it's something that's still so creepy that we had to bring it up. New York Times put out a piece on seven creepy patents that Facebook has that will likely make you reconsider whether you want to keep using their platform. Some of them are more benevolent and not that creepy, like using pictures and status data to determine who's in a relationship with who, as well as classifying your personality based on how you engage with their platform. That makes sense. The weird ones come to play with something like predicting life changes based on things like your credit card transactions and location to see if you're about to have a baby or graduate. Then they use your phone's microphone to identify what TV shows you're watching and whether or not you watch the ads based on whether or not you mute them. And they want to better understand your consumption patterns based on all that. Like, you know how we joke that you'll get ads just based on mentioning you want to buy something in a conversation, even if you don't post it on social media? Hmm. Well, it seems that Facebook is completely intent on using your microphone to gather data about you, and if that means they're going to serve you ads for those Fabergé eggs that look like a cowboy because you said that you thought that they looked dope, then so be it. A creepy company's gonna creep. And then in not creepy company news, but stupid greedy company news, PUBG has dropped its lawsuit against Fortnite. So as of the time of filming, PUBG didn't give a reason why it was withdrawing its claims against Fortnite, but we think it's likely due to the fact that they're owned by the same company. Yeah, that's right. Tencent Holdings has a piece in both of the companies that make the Battle Royale games. Like, at that point, basically all you're doing is paying money to yourself and making some lawyers rich. And then there's also the fact that Epic Games, makers of Fortnite, made the Unreal Engine, which is used in PUBG. So like, why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Now, let's super meander through some topics so that we can get to the meat of today's show. Taiwan partners of Nintendo, such as Macronix, who produce read-only memory, are expecting to have massive sales in the second half of this year due to the expected demand and draw of games such as Super Mario Party, Pokemon Let's Go, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Nintendo has set a goal of selling 20 million Switch units in 2018, which is 30% more than they sold in their inaugural year. And considering Pokemon is the most money-making franchise in the history of the world, we wouldn't be exactly shocked if Nintendo absolutely destroyed those figures. If you love Microsoft's original Intellimouse, you should be excited because they're now available for purchase for only $40 you can have the HD reboot of an asymmetrical mouse that so many people loved and have fond memories of. 
I'm gonna stick to my RGB mice though. If they had only updated it for 2018 and made it cost $60 and gave it some fly RGB underglow, then I would have actually considered picking one up. Then the SD Association has announced a new type of card format called SD Express. It's supposed to combine the speed of PCI Express with the protocols of NVMe to bring 100 and 28 terabyte cards that can transfer at roughly a gigabyte per second. Clearer specifications or when this will start shipping are not yet announced, but if you wanted to be even more confused about the different type of card formats there are, this is your time to shine. You got SD Express, you got SD cards, you got CFast, you got all of these other options. Who knows what's going on? All we know is that we now need an 8K camera and these cards, and we'll be able to bring you the crispiest, hottest, hot news that has ever existed. And Glass Antimony has made a monoatomic phase change memory. So in a recent development in collaboration with IBM and in a university, they've been able to get some phase change memory out of antimony in a way that they never could before. The practical use for this is that at some point this could be the replacement for DRAM on your computer since it's non-volatile, but also should be able to access information just as quickly. The only problem is that the antimony dissolves in about 100 seconds. The scientists are confident that they can work around it, but all I know is I'm still longing for the day that RAM prices come down, and if that means we need to replace silicon with antimony, then I'm all for it. If you want to know more, check the link in the video description. And then in the same vein of expensive memory, Samsung has recently announced that they're upping production for HBM2. However, prices will likely remain insanely high for cards using it, and it's the exact reason companies are using GDDR6 instead of HBM2 on their upcoming next-gen cards, and it's because demand is still tremendously outpacing what can be produced. So this is for the high-performance compute cards that are actually using it, Vega notwithstanding in that. But because Samsung has devoted more fab space to other projects, such as GDDR6 and other types of RAM, they're not able to make enough HBM2. They stated at ISC recently that they could even double the amount of HBM2 that they're producing, and it wouldn't be any anywhere near enough. So it's simple economics. You have supply that's too low, you have demand that's way too high, you throw in a little pinch of price fixing and you get GPUs and RAM prices that are more expensive than any processor you put in your system. And then two quick pieces of Intel news before we get to the Nvidia NDA situation. It appears that notebook companies are expecting laptop sales to slow down quite a bit because they won't have any interesting CPUs to put in them because Intel is behind on switching to their 10 nanometer process. So DigiTime says, without the support of Intel's new generation CPU, notebook vendors will have little to stimulate replacement demand. All they can do is to focus on promoting gaming and business use notebooks while continuing to lower costs for consumer models by suspending the incorporation of innovative applications and functions originally designed to go with Intel's new CPU. You see friends, this is what happens when one company spends too long at the top. Everyone gets complacent using only them and then when they start to suck, you've forgotten how to have options and use the alternative. Also, it doesn't ha help that the alternative isn't really trying to push mobile processors and that they're, you know, combining with the biggest force. Otherwise, they might have a real big opportunity on their hands here. And then there's a rumor out of WCCF Tech that the next round of CPUs will include an i9 on the normal desktop platform. They're expecting that the 8-core 16-thread CPU will be named the i9-9900K and can be placed on the Z390 chipset. And as much as people don't like WCCF Tech as a source, this sounds kind of like the stupid crap Intel would pull. I mean, with the Coffee Lake mobile release, they decided to call the unlocked i7 an i9, which is an absolute giant piece of molasses malarkey. It's just an overclockable i7. Don't call it an i9, it's not. And so if the rumor is to be believed, it looks like Intel will solely be relying on the marketing hype of users getting to buy an i9 instead of a Ryzen 7 2700X for driving sales because the i9 is not gonna be any different than the Skylake 6700K that came out earlier except for as double the cores. Doesn't it feel so good to know that instead of actually getting their process technology sorted out, which they've been struggling with since 2015, that they've just decided to make you feel better about buying their same old CPUs instead. Like this is just a Skylake rebadged a couple of times over with eight cores. But oh wait, they actually released that last year. It was called the i7-7820X. They didn't even call it an i9 back then. But now you get to feel amazing because you'll have an i9-9900K in your normal ATX system. Feel proud. 
Feel bold, feel intel inside of your veins. Now, let's transition over to more dominant company news. There's outrage over NVIDIA's NDA that it's been recently sending out to media. Now, let me preempt your comments. I know about the Gamers Nexus video. Yes, you should definitely watch it. Go watch it up there. I'm linking to it. It's useful, it's good, and I recommend it. But for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, let's get into the details. Recently, it seems that NVIDIA has been trying to refresh their non-disclosure agreements that it's had with various media outlets, and some of these outlets have decided to take issue with it. Heist of note from Germany is causing a lot of the hubbub here, and it feels that it's an attack on their journalistic work. So, some things to note about the NDA so we can understand why Heist feels like NVIDIA is trying to destroy their integrity. It appears that companies were given only two days to sign the NDA, and then it has phrasing such as using confidential information solely for the benefit of NVIDIA, and the NDA has a shelf life of five years, meaning you can't disclose information for five years after NVIDIA gives it to you. Then there's some concern about the statements that the signer shall not post news stories based on confidential information and or post videos predicting or hypothesizing about future announcements using confidential information. Now, now, if you interpret these statements in the most harmful, malicious way possible, I can see how some people would think that NVIDIA is trying to silence journalists. If NVIDIA wants you to shut up for five years, you're not allowed to post anything that's not to the benefit of NVIDIA, and you can't even talk about rumors and leaks if you've signed the NDA. How could NVIDIA even think this is okay? There's no way they could sign this and retain any sort of integrity because that would mean that they could never post anything against NVIDIA. I get that perspective. I understand where heists and other entities and commenters are coming from when they oppose this. But from my perspective, this actually isn't a big deal at all. First of all, solely for the benefit of NVIDIA simply means that the confidential information is for their benefit. You can't disclose it to other parties because it's NVIDIA's information and they benefit from it. It means nothing about if you can give something a positive review or not. A review isn't based on confidential information once it's posted, because at the time it's posted, the confidential information goes from being confidential to being in the public perception and then isn't actually confidential anymore. That's why there's embargo lifts, so that confidential information doesn't remain confidential information forever. Take a shot every time I say confidential information. However, if NVIDIA decides to never lift the embargo or doesn't give you a a date that you can disclose the confidential information, that's when that five-year clause kicks in. Let's say that NVIDIA was to develop a super amazeballs GTX 1180 Ti Ti that uses 50,000 CUDA cores and, drew only, and draws only 15 watts of the wall, and they tell you about it while you're under this NDA. But then they realize that they can never sell the card or put it to market because it randomly murders one person every day. So they scrap the project. That five-year time clause would mean that you can't say diddly squat about the murderous monster GPU until five years after you were told about it, even if NVIDIA doesn't ever bring it up again. And then as far as not being able to post new stories based on confidential info or videos predicting things using confidential info, that makes perfect sense here, honestly, and I see zero issue with this. This is the exact reason that the phrase, I can neither confirm nor deny, exists. Once you know about something secret, you're not allowed to talk about it or give hints or say what parts of the rumor are true or not. That's the whole thing about it being confidential information. As soon as you start giving any indication about the truthiness of various rumors or future concepts, then you start making it less confidential. NVIDIA is trying to protect their intellectual property and make sure that they can launch things without having a bajillion leaks all over the place. This is a standard practice by any company. They want to protect the things that they've worked so hard on. NVIDIA should be allowed that right, even if you don't like how they are so big and so amazing or terrible or however you view them. And you can't take the past transgressions of the GPP and apply it to something that's so benign. So the outrage over the NVIDIA NDA seems much to do about nothing to me. Everyone's carrying on like it's a foreboding albatross for GPP edition 2.0 when it's really a run of the mill NDA. I've signed countless NDAs with other companies that look exactly like this one and they weren't trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. They're just trying to protect their information until it becomes public.
public. That's the whole point of signing these. You can't disclose information until we say it's public. And then the agreement gives indication that the signer can exit at any time they want and will no longer be held to conditions, which is not something a shady entity would do. They'd write an in perpetuity clause in there. But also, that's the reason that a five-year clause is in there. You can't go on and say you're out of the NDA and then go spilling the secrets of everything you learned in the two weeks that you were under it. You would have to wait until five years or it becomes public information before you can even start talking about it. That just makes perfect sense. So in summary, I can understand the outrage, but I don't agree with it or share the same perspective. Again, check out the Gamers Nexus video on the matter if you want a deep dive on it because they spoke to an actual lawyer about the terms in the NDA and they were equally underwhelmed with the outcry about it. And I haven't signed the NDA with NVIDIA, so don't worry about that at all. Like, I'm still gonna be posting rumors, yay! You all love them so much. And that's where I'm going to end today's show. If you like this video, you like what I'm trying to do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on these daily videos. But that said, of course, as always, my name is Brett Sticklemonster. You've just been Sticklemonster, and I love your faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.